Barry would, Poppy would, and most of all Dad. We would never, well, I never thought this day would come. To me, you were in school. You left way too soon. There are grandchildren that didn't get to see the real you. The fit Barry Ward that lived for hockey, and then the savvy football trainer working for Pran when we were kids. Then Meeks. Meeks and I joined in at South Yarra. Then Dad and Meeks joined Sandringham. One year he had a heart attack, so in the end of the grand final, which Sandy was playing in, Meeks and I rang the TV station, ABC, and got the commentators to give Dad a shout out during the game. Sandy won, and then the team visited Dad at hospital. He was so proud. But eventually, he hung his boots up to take it easy. They, they will never know the Barry from Bang Street, who hosted Saturday night poker games to all out water fights. Yes, Dad had a fun side. Megs and, and I know Megs and I used to know what mood he was in by the music he was blaring. Alice Cooper, you were good to go in. But if he was playing ACDC or Meatloaf, you knew to back away and wait for a while. He loved his music and dancing. You grandkids may not know, but Nan and Pop loved to go dancing every Friday night at the town hall when they were young. Besides Mum, his other true love was Ventura. Great times had, friendships were made, which is still strong today. I love the trips we all took. Most of all, I remember the Christmas party. You rock in the sausage sizzle. And most of all, they will never know the love he had for them. Goodbye, old man. You'll be sadly missed. P.S. Megs may not have been, you and Megs may not have been close when you were young, but I know she loved the years you spent together as sports trainers. She realised how similar you both were and how much in common you had. She loved every minute of it. So when Mum died, Megs took over, watching over the old man. And when she saw he needed help, she packed her and Bonnie up and moved to Cobram to be his carer. You were a grumpy old man, but she didn't care and put her life on hold for you. But to Megs, every day with you was a bonus. Megs always learnt something new and quirky about you every day. Thanks, Sis, for taking such good care of Dad. He wouldn't have lasted as long as he did without you. You're safe. Rest in peace, Boots, Baba, Wardy, Barry, Dad, and most of all, Poppy. And in the words of your grandson, he was the best pop. Thank you very much, Jodie. So um, now I'd like to call upon Carla to come forward, please. On the 31st of December 2020, we all went to the great man. Pop sure was different to the rest. I wish you could have stayed longer, but I knew deep down it was time for you to be pain free with man. It makes my heart know that your time has ended so soon and that I'm never going to never see your beautiful, kind, pure and loving soul no more. But one thing I'll forever know is that I'll never stop loving you endlessly, nor forget our beautiful, beautiful memories. I'll forever miss me coming, always coming every school holidays and seeing you. I'll lose your days on the couch watching my TV shows and you're telling me how many times you saw these shows with Jenna and Rich, but I still continue to watch them with me. Your hand and pickle sauce sandwiches with loads of butter and then you made the best potato pumpkin mash for dinner. I'll also miss our mornings going down to Linda and Brian's and you'd have your coffee with them and you'd guess back about, about what you guys thought was interesting while I was sitting there boring. <laughs> My favourite of all was coming to see you and spending quality time with you, but now that you're gone, it's not going to be me coming to see you every holiday and making more memories with you. I knew you were becoming sick of our year and understand your time had to end sooner or later, or in other words, eventually. You are a great man and pop, but the most of all, the best to be around you. You are definitely and most certainly 
will never be forgotten. I realize for a very long time there's going to be a hole in my heart and that I'm going to deeply miss you for a very long time. I promise you that I'll try my hardest to succeed in my life goals and in school to make you proud from up there. I hope you're having fun sharing stories and reminiscing with Nan again. I also hope you're, you're happy and out of pain. With what I could say, another goodbye, not in person, but here today in front of the people you love and surrounded yourself with. I love you deeply and I'm missing forever and always and hope you're taking care. As Nan would have said, I love you to the moon and back. With much love, goodbye, pop you now. I think that deserves a round of applause, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Carla. And now I'd like to call upon Casey Jones, please. Today we celebrate the life of Barry Wood. To me, he was Poppy, and to my kids, he was Pop from Cobram. He and them had a very special bond that not many great-grandparents get to have, and I and them will be ever grateful for it. When I was little, I would forever be under your feet, and when everyone else said that I was the devil child, um, or said that I had done something naughty, you were quick to say, no, not my number one princess, she wouldn't do that, and you would be the one quick to run to my defense, and that never changed. From watching you, from watching you tip your VB on the barbecue, then giving me cheeky sips, to letting me press the buzzer for the garage roller door when we come back from down the shop. Then as I grew into a teenager and you sat me down, showed me a map, showed me how to get on the exact plans what I needed to go to, to go to my trade school. My nan and pop lived in a two-story flat my whole childhood, and when I went and I went through a stage where I was terrified to go to the toilet by myself because the toilet was upstairs. Everyone was sick and tired of taking me to the toilet, so Pop came up with an idea and he started at the top of the stairs, then would move lower and lower down the stairs until eventually he was at the very bottom of the stairs. And then eventually he was at the bottom of the stairs and he helped me conquer my fears. I feel very blessed that both of my nan and pop got to meet and have a great relationship with my kids, but even more blessed because of pop's bond that he had with them over the last six years. Coming to pop room to see Poppy will always be memories that they will always love and cherish. This time of year will always be hard for us, but I promise to keep our traditions up going to the big strawberry, swimming in Pop's pool. And I promise <clears throat> I'm at peace knowing that you're up there with Nan, but a little scared for you at the same time. <laughs> there are six years, six years worth of stuff that you've pissed her off. <laughs> um, I know you've missed her dearly. Um, we will forever miss you both. Love you, Pop. Love your number one princess. Thank you very much, um, Casey. And now, Ashley Joyce, if you'd like to come forward, please. Pop was my best mate, my hero. He had the heart as big as father, but the body of father to Johnny. Pop endured a lot in his life, numerous heart attacks, heart surgery, cancer, and probably the scariest of all, the wrath of our beautiful Nan. <laughs> Nan and Pop did so much for me growing up. They bought me my first car, first set of golf clubs, and pretty much every pair of footy boots I ever wore. Pop even bought a hoodie of the football team I was playing for at the time. He rocked up to one game, and he had embroidered on the back Joby's Pop in big letters. <coughs> which I'll admit at the time was a little bit embarrassing, but now that I look back on it, it makes me so happy knowing he was proud enough to want everyone to know that I was his grandson. There's so much about this man I'm going to miss, I could speak all day. 
a week of chats about how bad Collie were on the weekend, starting with, I've taken the flags down, mate. <laughs> uh, anyway, Anzac Day Dawn services together, where we, you would wake me up an hour before we had to leave because you knew that you'd have to come in another four times before I'd get out of there. And just the way that when any of us were getting told off, we'd just look at each other and just shrug our shoulders. Most of all, I'm just going to bloody miss my butt. I love you, mate. Uh, firstly, I'm not well today, um, simply because I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> uh, so I was normally for I would perform better than I am going to today, so um, I regretfully decline my performance today. <laughs> firstly, Jodie, Mead and I would like to thank all of you coming today and joining us um, both here today and virtually. We've got probably half of Sydney watching today as well. And, I'd also like to thank the, uh, the people that donated or, or um, offered up some flowers here today. It was amazing. I would like to just thank a couple of people, if I may, Brian, Renee and Vanessa for helping us arrange today's service. Um, and a special thank you to Ashley, Sarah, Dave, Carol and Mike, who worked incredibly hard to put this service together with myself and Megan, so we do want to thank you very much. Well, there's simply one word to describe my dad. Um, and it's not pop, it's not dad, it's not bazza, it's difficult. <laughs> now some people interpret difficult as being stubborn. Um, but Linda has a, coined a different term, she's added to this context, she called him bloody stubborn. Um, but you see, we, did, we thought the stubbornness was created as he got older, but in reality he was, he's been stubborn all his whole life. Whether it was being a union rep at Ventura and stirring up people uh, in the management, whether it was uh, coaching the uh, Collingwood Football Club virtually from the warmth and comfort of his uh, lounge room, or his parenting. Once Dad made up his mind, that was it, um, and he would move on. Uh, to the end, uh, Dad did it his way and didn't budge for anyone. In many ways, that behavioural trait is in all of us, both the children and grandchildren, so to um, our partners, we just want to apologise in advance that we are our pop. But some of you don't know, and I'm going to tell you something you don't know about Dad. He was a trailblazer. He was a modern, he used modern parenting techniques before anyone else did. I know this is strange, but I'm going to learn about it. Dad would help Mum with the housework. He would also cook. Now, back in the day, this was the 80s, where my sisters had mullets. Um, they, um, I didn't have a mullet, but Ashley had a mullet. Casey may have had a mullet, or she may have done it herself. Anyway, I'm distracted. Um, my dad was quite a, you know, I go to the store, so my dad cooked a great meal, and I think, Dad cooks? What? Who is this guy? Is he, is he a widower? No, he's not a widower. He's with my mum, but he wants to do some of those modern things. So, Dad pioneered some of these modern techniques that some of you parents now use and take for granted. For example, he would um, quite often do a number of things. First one was bribery, very big on bribery. He would bribe us to behave well. Second of all, he would um, make sure that he used emotional guilt to get us to clean up our, our rooms, to do any basic chores. But probably the most important one is there wasn't an iPad and there wasn't an iPhone during the time I was a child. I know, amazingly so. Um, but what he used to do is just take on extra shifts at work. So he had to avoid picking us up, dropping us off, taking us to sports, going to school plays, and all of that. So he, as you can see, Dad was a modern parent way back in the day. Um, Dad had a significant influence on me as a person at dinner. He would um, often challenge me on the daily current affairs and politics. He would absolutely love to stir me up at dinner. Um, especially about my beloved Paul Keating, so sorry if anyone is an anti-Paul Keating person, and also South African politics. But without me knowing it, my dad was actually giving me an education in, um, in, in modern thinking and uh, 
and I really appreciated that for him. Um, he would often shift his position, which I thought was really smart. He was trying to show me multiple different angles of an argument, but it was actually because he was losing an argument, so he just got that. <laughs> Some who know me know I do that quite often, so thank you, Dad, for that technique. It's helped me quite a lot in my life. Um, when people beat my dad, um, one thing they say is, you have exactly the same sense of humour as your dad does. And I'm going to tell a little bit of a story here because uh, um, there are some victims in the room and I apologise to them. Um, dad would often tell me in the morning when I was staying here at Cobra and then he had to go and see Mary and Clint and stir it up a bit. So about 9 o'clock he'd go into Mary and Clint's place, get them going, get them revved up, get them arguing and leave. <laughs> Then he'd come back, he'd have a smoke, and he'd say, right, I've got to go down to Brian and Linda's now. <laughs> go down to Brian and Linda's, do exactly the same thing. So by midday, his work had been done, he had disrupted the whole village with his sassiness. But uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was definitely a uh, shit stirrer, as I am as well. Another trait I've inherited from my dad is work, his work ethic. Dad was a hard worker, working six days a week to support his family. Dad worked up until he was 70, um, only scaling back in his late 60s. Um, I've found the same fulfillment in my working life as Dad did. He truly loved working at Ventura and they were his family. He would often enjoy his conversations with An Andrew Cornwell and would, I would always look forward to hearing them when he'd arrive back home every day. One of the things Dad did enjoy also um, was going on the Ventura social events. However, um, when the word winery was used, he wasn't so keen to go to a social event. So Dad being Dad, uh, being stubborn, as we said, or, or Linda would say bloody stubborn, would sit in the bus as everyone would dock the bus for an hour or two hours to do wine tasting with his arms crossed. Now I don't know whether it was because he didn't like wine or he just didn't, he was so concerned about the amount of money my mum was going to actually, um, actually spend, but uh, Brian would often encourage uh, my mum to spend that big just to get my dad into a wrong state. Um, when I was 11 years old, um, I, was, oh, I was the apple of the eye. I was golden haired, blue eyed. I was adorable. <laughs> then, in the, on the 25th of August, 1988, Ashley Bloody Joe was born. And my status as the golden boy was just diminished quickly. However, Dad loved being a father, but he absolutely was in heaven being a grandfather. He absolutely thought this was his happy place. Whether it was weekends watching the grandkids sporting events or having them over for sleepovers, Dad loved every single minute of it and he continually would talk about it um, to anyone who would listen. Of course, there was no other greater love than Dad's wife, my mum, Norma Ward. They met at a racing carnival and in true fashion, my mother challenged him to a race, um, and my mum won, being my typical mum. Uh, over the years, they, their bond became stronger and stronger. They truly were a great couple who were united through whatever life um, threw at them. Dad was a pillar of strength to my mum during her cancer battle, um, and not once complained, but devoted his, himself to her care. The only thing that I guess today offers us all is that uh, my, my dad will now be reunited with my mum. One of the best decisions my dad did make was moving up to Cobra um, and retiring here to live out the rest of his life. He loved every single minute here. He made some amazing friends. He would often say living in Cobra was pure heaven. To Clint, Mary, Brian, Linda, Dave and Carol, all of you have played a very pivotal part in my father's life. And without you, he wouldn't have lived as love and as happy as he did. So thank you from our family. To everyone else at the Green Palms, we'd also like to thank you as well for putting up with him, um, but also for being there for us for the last couple of weeks and tolerating us um, um, just being wards. Um, two years ago, I was lucky enough for my dad to walk me down the aisle alongside my niece, Casey. Well, if um, I'd known the attention my dad was going to get on the day, I would not have invited him, um, quite frankly. I am married to a Leo and a Chilean, so that uh, caused some trouble there. Spotlight was off both of us for a little while. Um, but Dad got up, and I'm surprised in case you didn't mention this, because it's quite funny now, I don't know why you didn't mention it, but Dad got up, he was umming and ahhing about doing speech, didn't, didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it, and then he said, all right, fine, I'm going to do it. But Casey had to stand next to him, and then he got up, cleared his throat, 
said his first line, everyone laughed and pushed Casey's aside <laughs> and then started to deliver his speech. But all, um, all night he sat in his chair with a line of people coming up to thank him and talk to him and the next day he, just, he was just smiles from uh, cheek to cheek and very proud of, of, of what he had performed and getting all the accolades but he was in his happy space desk. So a very lucky moment for us all. Uh, it's fair to say that 2020 has been a pretty terrible year for all of us. Although there have been, you know, although there's always going to be storms brewing, we've always got to keep in mind that there are rainbows there as, up there as well. In, um, in 2021, I was planning to take my dad on a little adventure. Um, unfortunately, that hasn't happened, but dad, I am going to take that adventure for you and honour you um, on that trip. Faked up my family and I, a small reprieve, um, and that was being able to spend some time with my dad before he passed. Uh, it was not an easy eight days for us, and yet when it did say, it did, um, when it was time to say goodbye, words will not describe the grief. You'll always be in our hearts and our minds. Dad, like mum, um, there will not be a day that goes by that I won't think of love for you. You're a legend, amazing father, and godfather, and grandfather. I hope you have a good rest. I hope you've had a good rest for the last six years because you're not going to get a rest now with mum, and she's going to get you to work straight away. Love you. And uh, what a dad you've had, and um, wow, how did you manage this man here? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite an incredible story. But anyway, listening to um, the story about the fun times of Barry's life reminds us of memories and now the greatest possession that we now have. So lovely memories of a character of a man who was loved and admired by you all. So today, with much love and pride, we shall acknowledge his life's journey through photos and images captured by his family. I hope you can see the screen. Is it dark enough? Silence. 
Barry, we've come from Melbourne. His name is Ron, and he's known Barry for a long, long time, and he'd like to share a few of his stories with us too. So if you'd like to come forward, please, Ron. Thanks, William. Megan, Gay, for allowing me to come here and speak today. Uh, I met Barry when I was uh, just on nine, and he was eight. Uh, we lived in Paran. Uh, we had a little milk bar in the corner, and we met his uh, kids, and we'd uh, get our free lollies, and, and uh, he dropped them off the, uh, uh, the owner of the shop. Uh, we were a little scallywag of the little area. There was a group of about eight of us gathered together uh, when we were kids. And uh, we did lots of funny things. Uh, we used to play all our sports in the street, cricket against the land coach, like you do in the old days. Uh, footy up and down the street before cars came up and down. And, uh, now there's too many cars that don't win anything. Uh, uh, lots of other things as well. But, uh, you know, boots and small in stature, but great in heart. He was a big man. Uh, if you know him, uh, we did. Uh, he was a member of our hockey club, and we started that uh, when we were 13 years old. Uh, we first went to um, the boys club at the uh, police club in uh, uh, opposite the Ashford Theatre in the city. We went there for one year and we found that just wasn't what we wanted to do. Boys were too serious for us, we wanted to have more fun. And we ended up have a friend of ours, one of the, uh, not a friend of mine, but the back one of his brothers, uh, a couple of the older brothers of our, of our group, and invited us to come down to what we call the powerhouse on the lake and we joined the boys club there. And that was the making of every single one of us. They gave us credibility, they taught us about believing in each other, about truth and honesty, and they showed us everything we needed to know about getting on in life. It was there with Barry along the top up the back himself, and several other of us learned everything we needed to know. And, and we became streetwise as well. As you probably know, your dad was pretty streetwise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely one of those. <laughs> Uh, along the way, uh, we, we just left, uh, um, we used to wait at watch and we used to race around the block. And like, there was a, there was a race called Rose, and we had a few tumbles, a few tracks, quite a few times, but we were always competitive with each other, pushing each other to try and get to be the winner. And that's where it all started, growing and growing from that boys club to there, to we used to travel on the train on Saturday morning to 8 o'clock in, in the morning. No parents, we only get 11, 12 and 13 with our bag down hockey, we travel all over Melbourne to go to play hockey, all the way from Melbourne to Croydon to play, it's a long, long way, get all the way public transport to get there, it would be a nine o'clock game, we leave at seven in the morning to get there. The crazy things we did as a group of boys, and we grew as a group um, along the way, um, just trying to remember all these great things off my, top of my head as I've been trying to wrap them up the back while I've been sitting there. Uh, uh, Barry's uh, grandparents, Charlie and Oh, I can't remember his mother's name. Do you remember it? Yes, Ethel. Ethel and Barry. Well, Barry, Charlie had, Charlie had the, uh, the, the fruit store down at the Paran Market in the old days. And uh, we used to sneak down there when we were kids and get a few extra oranges and apples. And, and Charlie was a lot. Along with Barry, because he was in the two. <laughs> and uh, a bit older, we, uh, we used to um, uh, load the trucks. Tarax trucks for Lindsay Fox. When we were kids, we were 14, we used to go down to the depot with uh, Lindsay pick us up in the truck, take us all down there and we load his trucks for him. And we don't think we got paid yet. We still have a scab over, I think. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, uh, Lindsay was um, the son of uh, Donny Fox, who ran all of the coke uh, supplies for around the area. Anybody wanted coke or coal or it's like Rob in those days because the, the pubs closed early and needed beer. And then you know, Donnie Fox used to, uh, not, the, the, Fox, the old man Fox used to run it, and uh, Barry used to help stack the beer under the beds in his house. Which <laughs> <laughs> is a true story, it's, it's what's happened. Uh, Third of my coffee, correct? <laughs> yep, right. Uh, so we used to have Billy Carboys down the hill, and uh, the, uh, a couple of the uh, local criminals were swift and uh, they, they all ran the air, always gave us hard times. They pulled their guns at us a couple of times because we were the noisy boys on the street. And those were crazy things, you know, this is what happened. We, uh, we carried on to uh, get to the next stage of our lives where we were starting to work. Uh, uh, 
Charlie asked Barry if he wanted to come and work in the womb at the, the print shop. He said, no, he didn't want to do that. And then his uncle asked him if he wanted to work in the printing shop he had in just off Chapel Street Brand. He went and tried that for a couple of months. He said, no, that wasn't for him. And then next we know, he was working at the Cram Council. And he was on the Garbo run. And he was on the back of that truck, running and picking up those bins and throwing them into the back every day. Six days a week he worked, like a Trojan. And that kept him super bloody fit. Because they were work, they, they had a couple of drinks on the gym. So they worked bloody hard, those guys. I went and saw him one day. And they, they would sweat was running on the same work, throwing those bins on the back of trucks. That's what he was like. Um, we eventually got to the stage, the next stage of our lives, we uh, moved on to become married. Uh, I was pitched man at Barry's wedding, and Barry was cruised for my wedding. And uh, we used to, uh, before we got married, we used to come to my place. My place was the local home where when we weren't out on the streets running around doing stupid things, it was Sunday at my place for a barbecue and drinks. My mum and dad would put on the place and open up the front of the house for us and we'd sit there and watch World of Sport in the old days, if you remember all the young blokes out there. World of Sport, we used to sit there and watch World of Sport and my dad used to give us the beers and uh, we used to have always had finished the beer before we got another one. So he'd never fill the empty. He'd come around with a bottle and say, you want another drink? If you had half a bottle, half a glass, you just got bypassed. You know, <laughs> only fill the empty. Uh, Barry used to sit in with us and do that with us many times. Uh, also, uh, Went from there, he went to, he did his job there, and he also, you know, through the hockey, through the, uh, the boys club, we became hockey members up our first year. We started, I think Barry was 12 and in the under 13s in his first year, and I was 13, so I was in the under 16s. Um, but we played lots of other, uh, lots of other years together, because that first year was um, Barry went on to be a um, really good hockey player. Um, he, um, was a member of, uh, I don't know where the colours was, was it? He was a member of our Powerhouse Hockey Club's first ever state first championship. He was a member of that side. He was also uh, a very keen uh, player for Victoria on the self he made that state side. Uh, just goes on. And I remember him, uh, I remember him down the park, racing Norma. And we were kids, we were young. Norma lived just one street away, it's about as far as those houses over there from Barry's place around the corner. And between them was the shop. So they weren't far there. So everybody had the shop. So they met there, they raced because Norma was a bit stronger than you. Just a <laughs> Barry was short. You know, there was a time in my life when Barry was taller than me, but the sun and over grew. I only got a couple of inches because he was coming to the shore with me. But, but uh, uh, he, uh, he met Norma and, boy, that was like the first side, I think. The guts up the people who got chased after him and got her. And she was a great blessing in his life. She's a beautiful woman. Um, and as you all know, she went to the funeral. She had a hair of Dorma Gallon. And I'm really sad to hear about him. Um, Barry is one of the gang, one of our boys. Right. And I'm here on behalf of the ten of us we hung around together, out of ten of us hung around together at the very beginning, I remember. And I thank you for the time. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ron, for sharing those memories uh, way, way back. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, today's ceremony is drawing to a close, but before we finish, on behalf of Barry's family, I thank you all for your attendance here today, and you're all invited to stay on and join the family here um, for a uh, refreshments and um, I'm sure lots more stories. So I'd now like to read a poem that the family have collected which I think reflects Barry quite well. Words are few, thoughts are deep, memories of you are ours to keep. A life made beautifully, beautiful by kindly deed, a helping hand for others need. Big was your heart, your friendship true, love and respected by all you knew. We speak of you with love and pride. We smile through tears we cannot hide. Thank you for the happy memories shared, the love that you gave, the way you cared. You've left a space no one can fill. We miss you now and always will. So it is now time to say farewell to our beloved Barry. 
Love does not end with dying or leave with the last breath. For someone you have loved dearly, love does go on forever. We know that your grief is a measure of the love that you had for Barry. And I'm sure that Barry would not want you to grieve in hurt or pain. But think of the joy that he has given you, that he has received from you, and that he has shared with you. You can take satisfaction that Barry was, and still is, a part of your life. His influence endures and will continue in the love that flows from his character and deeds. And I'm sure Baza's last words would be, Do not feel guilty for living when I have passed away. Keep smiling, laughing, playing, and do this every day. So may Barry's inspiring spirit continue to run free, accompanying us as we keep him in our memories forever, and inspiring us to live on without him. Let us leave here at peace, and at peace with ourselves, and at peace with each other, and our memories of Barry. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Would you please all stand, and would the coffin bearers please come forward.